This is Dr. Novak again. I thought I'd give you a little update. I'm also going to show you step-by-step uh, -step instructions on how to start setting up a plenum if you decided to go that route and what to use if you cannot get kitty litter. Anyhow, this is uh, uh, the pad I talked about in my last video, that uh, Acro pad, and it's... Uh, 18 by 10 in size and after using it 48 hours parts per million in the phosphates is 0.15 and yesterday after 24 hours is 0.23 so it's dropping even more so than it was yesterday and I think that's pretty good Whereas when I use the polyfilters, they dropped it. They helped the BCB drop it, but not to these levels. So one makes the claim, the polyfilter makes the claim that it removes uh, phosphates, all forms of phosphates. And one only makes the claim that it reduces phosphates. There's a big difference there. And the wording should be changed because I did not get the polyfilter to remove any of the phosphates. It lowered it, uh, but it did not, as it claimed, remove it. You know, that's, that's just like a long time ago with watches, if you remember. Remember they made watches and they said they were waterproof. And they made them change that to water resistant. That they will resist water to a certain depth and then after that, water can start seeping in. So they weren't waterproof, really. They were just resistant. And I think that uh, polyfilter needs to change that wording to it will lower phosphates, but it will not remove phosphates entirely. And I've been using the polyfilter here for close to two weeks. And it, the lowest I got it with the polyfilter uh, after a water change, I... I was surprised. I think it was 0.7. That was the lowest it ever got with the help of a water change using the polyfilter. So uh, I just want to keep you up to date that uh, now it's uh, 0 0.150 and that's after 48 hours. I imagine that's even going to drop even more. We will see and I'll let you know the update on how the plants are doing, how the algae is doing. Um, if it subsides the algae, if different kinds of algae, I'll let you know, you know, for the freshwater aquarium, um, to keep everybody up to date on that. But, uh, in all honesty, these pads from past experience, they will only remove so much of your phosphates or your nitrates, you know. They're only going to do so much. They're not miracle workers. They, they Like this one doesn't claim. It only claims to help reduce. And a lot of nitrate reducer pads are the same way. They will only help reduce your nitrates so low. Just like this pad. It's only going to do so much. So I wanted to uh, bring up right away. If you think, oh well, if I buy one of these and I'm having an algae problem, this should bring my phosphates down to... Uh, what I'm showing on this video to 0.15 or maybe even lower after, you know, 72 hours or something instead of 48 hours. Uh, not really. Don't think of it that it, it's only going to reduce so much. Let's say if you had five parts per million, maybe it will lower it only to, to two or three parts per million. Well, it reduced it for you. Okay. So don't think it's going to bring it down as low because... Don't forget, we're using the slow moving plenum, and I have a BCB basket that's also helping reduce phosphates. Okay, now you bring it down low. Now the pad can take over and bring it down even lower still. So just 
try to remember that. Don't don't get yourself all confused thinking these some of these products are are miracle workers. Uh, they're not. They're only going to do so much for you, and then they could become exhausted. And that's just the way they're made. So I found this pad on the internet, and it was only six ninety five. In case you're interested in trying it out, or maybe you would you would like to try it out, even if you're not using a BCB basket or a plenum or anything. Uh, let's see, Fish Tank Direct. I found. Let's. I'm giving that as an example. It was only six ninety five. That's pretty cheap. And for that price, you cut one of these things up. You can put in your canister filter. Like I showed, I have my BCB. That's why I did. I cut it the size, put it in the canister filter. And since you have to put floss or something in your canister filter anyhow, you might as well buy one of these, right? And use this as your, your uh, filtration medium that, that's going to filter out you know, detritus and everything else and, and particles and everything that are in the water, right? You're usually going to use a sponge and then you're going to use a, some kind of medium to get down even lower uh, particles, particulate matter that's in your aquarium, right? Might as well use one of these. And that's pretty cheap. I can't complain. So I'm trying it out. I'm letting you know what I'm coming up with. If I got 0.15 this morning, that's after 48 hours. I imagine tomorrow I could be reading 0 0.0 something. Or maybe it will even go down to 0 0.05 within 72 hours. So I'll keep you up to date what happens. And I'm going to also keep you up to date how long does it last and how long does it keep the phosphate down. So to get to the point of the whole video here is a guy in upper United States, New York, New Jersey, uh, Manhattan, all them, Rhode Island, everything. He uh, showed me some pictures of he just took some tests of a 16-gallon tank. He lowered his pH to 6.6, .6, tap water is 7.6, and his nitrates are 5. And that's what he's reading using his uh, aquarium, which I showed you some pictures of, a 16-gallon tank using a plenum. And that plenum, of course, is not a slow-moving plenum. It's just a plenum. Okay, it's not a slow-moving one, so I want you to understand that. So that's pretty good. He's already going with that tank. He set up a 5-gallon tank. He said that he thinks that one's broken in because all the algae has disappeared in that tank that had grown from the initial startup. It's gone now, and he's very happy with that tank. So that's something I think uh, uh, is good news for everybody. But the next photographs he sent me, because we talked, he uh, text messaged me, and he's also sending me photographs of all his setup. So I can do these videos for you, and he's showing what he's doing. He, he has the undergravel filter plate. And he's using a product called Marine Pure Gems. He's cleaning them out, getting the dust out. He said there's not much dust in them. And he puts that underneath his filter plate. I don't know what filter plate this is. It's black. It could be a Lee's. It could be a Penplax. I don't know. He's got one uplift tube, as you can see. He's using a very short. And you're not going to see this. By the time he's done with his stones, and decoration, you're not even going to see the uplift tube. All you're going to see is bubbles coming up. So, and if he uses uh, seal two, whether or not he stops that or not is up to him. But as you see, it's not covering 100% of this tank. That's okay. That's all right. You're still going to get the benefits, even though it doesn't cover 100%, if he's using this under gravel filter with the slow moving plenum to help his tank out. And he's using fluorite red. As you can see, he puts that down on top. And he's keeping it away from the edges because he is going to use another substrate of his choosing. Um, something to his liking. Instead of this red, he doesn't like the red. He's going to use something that could be darker. So 
lot of people would ask me, can I use fluorite red? Yes, you can use fluorite red. Clean it, put it down on top of your plenum, and then put a substrate of your choosing. You may choose ADA, you may choose whatever. It, it doesn't matter. You're, if you're going to make a planted aquarium, then use any color you like. I don't care if you want to use pink gravel. That's that's totally up to you. That's fine with me. But I'm just showing you what he's doing, and he's giving us an idea of how he did it so you can get an idea that, oh, I can do the same thing. He's adding the Marine Pure underneath the plate to help in aiding bacteria that's going to be down underneath the plate. And that will grow, of course, because the water's so slow, your bacteria bacteria. Because in slow moving water with hardly any oxygen, it is going to grow in there underneath the plenum. And he made some of his other tanks the same way using the same product. I, th I think if you would look at my videos, you will see he used this product to actually lift up his uh, plenum. And then he put screen over this product because now the bacteria that's in that plenum is actually going to establish in this marine pure and actually make more anoxic conditions for bacteria to live in. And you don't have to worry because the bacteria are not going to need to build up the polymeric adhesive because the water's not moving fast enough for water shear. So they're not going to have, the cells aren't going to have to build up that adhesive to stick to something so they don't flow off. It, it'll be very slow. So he did that with his other tanks and he seems to be very happy with using this particular product uh, underneath his plenum. And as you see, he just, he puts it down there and then he puts the plate on top of it to aid in the plate. And he has the uplift tube so, just short, and after he adds everything, so now you got kind of like an idea of how you can do the same thing. If you can't find kitty litter, a lot of people can buy fluorite red, which is basically a clay that has a lot of iron in it. And that could be used, and you can Fargo then the laterite. Another thing, he's not going to put kitty litter on top of this or on the bottom of it because he's going to have in his Red Sea Aquarium he's going to have a sump and he's making a big huge 7x7x11 seven seven basket a BCB basket and he's going to put it in his sump so he does not really need necessarily to put the kitty litter there because he has the fluorite plus it's a slow moving plenum he'll have no troubles at all if he makes his, uh, his substrate 3-4 inches deep five inches deep, it'll be just fine because he did make it a slow moving plenum. So that's something for you to think about. Uh, another thing to think about too is if you're going to make a planted aquarium and you're using a slow moving plenum like this, uh, there is a little word of caution. I'm going to give it to you right now. When I've done this years and years ago, okay, back in the 90s, one thing that I had noticed where if you have an aquarium and you build your substrate up from the bottom and you put your plants in versus doing the same thing but using a slow moving plenum or something like this. What I notice is CO2 now can get to your roots because you're bringing in water very slowly that's impregnated with the CO2 right from your CO2 uh, bubbler or whatever you're using to impregnate your water and I noticed that the plants grew a lot bigger because, you know, CO2 is taken up by the roots, and then that's, that could be sent off to the leaves, that CO2, as a food source. So you have that iron, magnesium, you have your CO2 down there all around the roots. They're going to start developing a massive root system because now you're feeding those roots CO2. They're going to send that off to your plant. And the problem I had, and I'm just letting you know the problem I had, is the plants grew huge and they outgrew the tank. The crip grew very, very big. In fact, I've never seen crip grow that big in an aquarium, but it grew huge. 
And the Amazon sword literally grew so tall in a 20 inch uh, tank that they actually were bending on the water surface. And so you need at least, if you're going to grow like an Amazon sword and you're going to use something like this, you probably need at least 24, maybe 36 inch tall tank because your sword is going to grow humongous. Really, it was over 24 inches long, the uh, Amazon sword was. That's, that's a big Amazon sword where the same sword used in a tank where the substrate was just on the bottom it didn't grow quite that big it grew it grew nice like people say uh, it grows nice and yeah i'll admit it but it didn't quite grow to that length and that big and that humongous so there's a downside and just remember that you may put plants in there because you are using a plenum co2 is going to get to those roots the roots are going to utilize that co2 where it couldn't utilize it before because you weren't uh, the intersection of topography was cut off by the glass and you're not moving water in and out very easily at all unless the plants are photosynthesizing. But this way they are going to get that CO2 right away to the root system. So if your plants overgrow your little 20 or 30 gallon aquarium, uh, don't blame me. That's all I'm saying. Okay, don't blame me. Oh, I followed your instruction. My plants are overgrown. Don't blame me. That's, that's just what's going to happen. You start feeding the roots of your aquarium plant CO2, and they are going to grow. A massive root system, and your plants are going to grow a lot bigger than what you think. I just thought I'd throw that word of caution out. Okay? So anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it gives you some insight of how you can do your aquarium like this particular fella is. This is the same guy who's already conquered uh, his saltwater. And I showed you pictures of his saltwater aquarium, which is absolutely beautiful. So I imagine this 75-gallon tank, when it's completely done, it's going to be an absolutely beautiful tank. Because, you know, he he's kind of like one of these guys. He's not going to spare any expense. He wants it to look his way. And he's going to put the substrate he wants down there. And uh, I think it's going to be gorgeous in about another six months to seven months or whatever it's going to be when he finally does get the whole thing started. And I'm still waiting on my aquarium. So until next time, I hope this helps you in case you want to make a plenum and how to do it. And you can use the fluorite and he will add the BCB to his sump. So until next time, uh, happy aquarium keeping and best of luck to everybody. Bye-bye.